this is the chain link fence behind my house that I want to convert into a solid wall. So this project is going to involve converting this into a wall that looks like stone. The intent will be to make the chain link fence in the backyard reflect and resemble this stone wall that I made for my front porch. This was done by building a wood frame, putting up concrete backer board, then covering it with expanded metal lath, and then finally scratch coating and then finish coating dividing it up into stone shaped pieces texturing with a sea sponge staining with acid stain and then sealing it and we'll try to make our chain link fence reflect this construction In addition to just covering this fence with concrete to make it into a rock wall, I want to extend the height of my fence. I'm allowed to put six foot fence out here. Right now this uh, chain link fence is four feet tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach rebar to the existing post and extend it up uh, another uh, 24 inches. I'm actually going to extend it with 22 inches of rebar figuring about a 2 inch cap to put on the top. And I want to extend this so it's nice and level. I've already got rebar attached to a post down there. Another down at the end here and I'm going to string a line along here. And I've marked these rebar with some tape. 10 inches down from the top so I can run a string up along here, line these up to the proper height, and then wire these tightly. This to the post with this bailing wire. I need to do several of them. It's a little easier if you have somebody to help you by myself. Just twist that wire tight. alternative to wiring, of course, a better way to do it, I suppose, is to actually weld these things on. But having never developed that skill, not having a welder, the next best thing is just to use these wire ties. And once this is covered with concrete, that will be rigid anyway. It uh, works just fine. That's how I built that concrete benches and this essentially is the same process. And now we need to uh, attach some chicken wire to this so that the concrete that we add to this will have something to adhere to. And we'll do a couple of layers of that. So first thing we need to do is cut a piece of chicken wire and I happen to have rolls here of uh, two foot chicken wire. It's just about the right size for this. If you can wear a pair of leather gloves, it's a good idea. At least in my case, what I do is I just wear one. And we 
I'm going to take about six inches of this chicken wire and we're going to cut it. Because doggone stuff gets awful sharp. Now for this, definitely have at least one leather glove. Otherwise you're going to end up with a bunch of holes in your fingers. We're going to take this chicken wire and we're simply going to wrap it around the rebar. And you can take some of these cut ends and fold them over that so kind of locks in the, the wire. The thing is just get this wrapped around relatively tight. is above the existing fence and this post is 22 and I need to leave room for a two inch finish cap. So now that we got that wrapped, now what we need to do is, is secure this with some wire ties. So I have to cover the lower part down here. And now that post had chicken wire wrapped all the way around it. Extension has chicken wire all the way around it. And that's ready for its first coat of concrete. So we'll get the chicken wire around here. Got a mix. I'm going to take these, make patties out of them, and push them right into that chicken wire. first layer. All the way in to the rebar. Time. Building it up, first layer. And there's first coat. After using chicken wire and fiberglass mesh, I found that uh, the best thing for me to do to fill in the field of the fence is to use the expanded metal lath. So that's what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be attaching the metal lath to the inside of the chain link fence. Then we'll fill this side with uh, concrete. It'll ooze through make a good solid uh, base for concrete to be put on from the outside as well.
small plastic ties. A good way to get it started. The rest of the ties can be made with wire. This by the bailing wire. Cut pieces off. Form them into a U shape. And then you put them through the fence. Like this. Cross them over. Twist them. Throw it tight. And then bend them down. They'll eventually get color covered with concrete. Okay, I'm gonna take another sheet of this now and cut it in half. I would take doing this. About half of it. That looks close. Put on a scratch coat on the inside here. It's time to mix concrete. Take this winter, why? Oh, okay. Because because I have coupons for ten percent off. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So if there's anything that you... Well, maybe what I should do is go over and buy a load of sand. Yeah, it's ten, uh, let's see, 10... I got to think about it. If you spend $250, you get $25 off. Yeah. If you spend... $50 off yeah. Sand will keep over the winter in the garage. Uh, well, we'll probably get more coupons by next yeah. year. The cement they wouldn't want to do that with. But. I didn't know. But anyway, if you go to Lowe's, I've got coupons. All right. Thank you very much. Now that bucket was about was about two fifths of a bucket. I only mix up that much. As I'm 71 years old, and it's uh, a little harder for me to carry some of that weight around. And uh, I just put it on with a margin trowel. You could uh, you buy a sprayer if you have the money to do that, and you're going to do lots of this kind of stuff. But this is a just a home project. You got a sprayer you could spray this on and be done with that whole thing in, in no time at all mixing big batches and you got to have somebody else along with you to work to fill the hopper on the sprayer but uh, if you want to get a sprayer check out Fishstone they have their stuff too and sprayers and uh, anyway I just use a margin trowel to put it on somebody might say well why don't you just dump it out put it on a on a hawk and use a big trowel and lay it on that way well if I use the Use the margin trowel, I can push it through pretty good and make little bumps on the other side that uh, make for a good good connection when I throw the scratch coat on the other side of the fence. So That's about the coverage you get from as much as I mixed up, which was a six batch mix. And we'll check it out after I get this done. Uh, here's, here's the scratch coat finished on the inside wall. Go take a look at the outside and what it looks like with just the scratch coat in here. Here's the outside of the wall and we can now cover. It's a lot easier to do this one. You can see the scratch coat in the inside makes lots of little bumps that makes it real easy for the outside coat to adhere to. Now with the other side hardened, it gives us a much stiffer wall to deal with. So we can actually take this mix now and we can actually throw it against the wall. We tried to do this on the other side. the fence would have bounced and thrown the material off. I can just throw some of that on there.
okay once you have your scratch coats on the next uh, step is to start making rocks now if you uh, want to at this point you can just put another coat of uh, stamping concrete on here and uh, just do concrete stamps I like to do these uh, rocks individually first thing I do is just uh, wet the base coat you can also paint this with some more acrylic haven't found it really necessary but uh, it is a good idea to get some liquid on here and it's also a good idea to start from the top and work down uh, the basic principle here what you could do if you wanted to is uh, you could take a black marker and you could mark out exactly every rock that you're going to make uh, I've done that in the past especially inside when I'm doing like a fireplace covering the important thing to remember here is you want these to be random size a little bit random shape the important thing is is like here make sure that there's no more than three joint lines that come together in any one spot and we start at the top and the reason we start at the top is so that we finish rocks down on the bottom we started up here then concrete could fall on our finished stuff and we'd have to clean them up start at the top anything that falls is just fine it's not in the way so I'm going to start by throwing some concrete on here and should let this set just a little bit longer uh, get some fresh stuff on here and put it on in general the shape that your rock is going to be and I'm going to fit this one in here And then uh, once you have it going, and it should be a little thicker than this. Uh, you're just going to put concrete on here and uh, shape it into a rock. And this will be a matter of taste, what you like. And it's edges up. be real thin if you want them to be. I want these to stand out just a little bit. A little better dimensional look. I'm not too worried about this top because I'm going to finish that off with a, with a uh, piece of concrete level because mine is going to have a lattice put up there and I want a nice smooth straight line. Put my lattice on. Now some people would say, well, why don't you just put a thick coat of concrete on here and, and uh, then scratch out the shape of the rocks on just a layer. Now if that's the way you want to do it, go right ahead. I just kind of take my time to do this. Okay, there's a rock. Now I'm going to do another one next to it. It's the same technique I used up front on my front porch. And of course if you want a grout joint in there, like a mortar joint, Leave some space. That can vary from wide to thin. I kind of like. Okay, so there's. 
there's a rock. Let me see if I have a space in here. Cedar wax wings up there in the trees. And the migration pattern. And that's how we're going to proceed. <laughs> we take a, a little bit of water, a piece of sea sponge, and then you just the sea sponge gives it some texture. And flat without any tool marks. continue that way until we cover a wall. Okay, here's the section of the fence we're working on with the rocks done. I'm right behind the school and I decided to be nice facing the school to put the school logo on it. It's a city of Genoa school so they're logo is a cog with a gear and it's the Genoa Kingston GK that's the school district that was done simply by drawing it out on heavy paper then taking the heavy paper and laying it over some uh, half inch styrofoam sheets tracing it out same with the letters cutting out the styrofoam buttering the back of the styrofoam cutout with concrete and slurry uh, and sticking that styrofoam to the to the flat portion of the concrete wall and then after that hardened to take uh, concrete and a trowel and some other small tools and covering the styrofoam with a good layer of uh, the strong concrete mix and so it ends up with the logo looking like it was carved out of out of uh, out of stone especially after it's uh, stained it'll look pretty good so anyway there's the uh, there's the wall with the uh, stones that we've been working on one of the things that I found as I extended these posts up a little higher is that they, uh, and I add concrete to the fence, it tends to raise the center of gravity and makes these a little more, a little less stable. So the fence is easy to shake. So I have a, a solution I've found to that. Need to give a little more lateral support to the fence. I can only do this on one side. If you could do it on both sides, it'll make it even stronger. But basically, I'll show you what I did. Uh, they dig a hole about six inches or so deep. I'm going to fill that with concrete and then I'm going to use a bent piece of rebar 
that's uh, bent in an L shape. So it'll be embedded in the concrete in the ground and also be embedded in the concrete that goes around the post. So that gives a, a great deal more rigidity to the whole thing. After adding the concrete support, you can see that the fence is much more stable now than what it was before. The uh, pillar extensions that I've made uh, to raise the height of my fence uh, made to look like stone posts and I've incorporated some slots in them and the slots are to uh, allow me to slide in uh, plastic lattice uh, panels so then I can get some uh, some vines growing and train them to grow in the lattice uh, still giving me a, a visual block and yet allowing air more air to pass through to the backyard so how do I go about making that extension well we've already seen how I attached a rebar to the uh, existing post and covered it with concrete and then took chicken wire and made uh, a post out of that. This is one of those posts with the chicken wire, a couple layers of chicken wire and uh, concrete to extend the, uh, the existing fence post. And now how do I make the broad flat area covered with stone that will also incorporate a uh, slot on each side so I can put in the lattice when I'm done with this fence. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach pieces of uh, expanded metal to it using wire and then we'll see how that uh, that works. I just need a piece of uh, expanded metal lap it's slightly smaller than the width that I want to make and uh, since I want this to be about a foot wide to be slightly smaller I'm simply going to wire this up with some lengths of wire and uh, the easiest way to do that by putting through this way Taking the wire around, wrapping it, and then we'll use a pair of pliers to tighten that up. And we'll use two of them. We're going to do the same on this side. Another scrap piece. 